Hey guys, uh, it's Rob, and welcome to part three of the tutorial. So, we're gonna jump right into it. Um, basically, the reason why I'm starting with a fresh uh, a track here, like a fresh project, is because I can't just throw a drop on and kind of make it like tutorial based. That's just kind of not how it works. Um, basically, I'll just be showing you guys how to make basic different sounds all in one patch. So to make that kind of modern talking sound that's like oi 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 it's very hard to explain but I, I'm sure you guys will know what I'm talking about when I show you so what you want to do is for most bass kind of oriented sounds like those filthy sounds that you hear in like Skrillex songs and whatever not just Skrillex don't worry I'm not a Skrillex fanboy just he's good that's it anyways no Skrillex arguments in the comments come on now uh, <laughs> basically what I'm going to do is uh, make modern talking, but yeah. Massive, you want to use it for most bass oriented kind of stuff because it's really, like, it's really diverse. You can do a lot of different things in this, and it's very nice. So, what I'm going to do is make a. Sorry, guys, I have to yawn. <sighs> Put a simple like note right here and have that just play. Now you can hear right away that it hits and then it kind of drops a little bit so let's listen to it one more time. You can see right up here in the spectrum like analyzer kind of deal too. You can see it hits and then it kind of just fades out just a little bit. Now you can see right here that amp which is our main amp which goes right to the master for this is routed to envelope 4 and you can see here at 4 that we have the attack which means how long the uh, sound takes to come in so we have like almost no attack here we have a certain amount of time like a, if we bring this up you can see it'll fade in bring it up it won't even come in because it'll take too long so let's put it back where it was originally you can just do that by double clicking on it and this is the level for where the attack finishes where it comes in after so the decay here is how long it takes for this level to get where you set it so if we have a really long decay in this level down here it will drop even more but like it'll drop even more than what it did before but it will take a longer time to do that so let's take a listen so if we turn down the decay a lot it's gonna be it won't sustain at all it'll just be a hit which can actually be pretty fun to work with. And just kind of like make something like this. Okay, I'm getting out of out of uh, off topic here. So <laughs> Let's just put this back, and that's basically how the envelope works in uh, in Massive. So we're going to kind of make it so that there is no sustain. So once it hits, it stays like that. That's basically all it is to it. So what we're going to do here is turn off all these oscillators except for one. Uh, they were on before. You can see that from this blue dot here, but they weren't amped at all. So even if we had them on, they wouldn't play any sound unless this amp was up. So we're gonna have them off just for now and what we're gonna do is bring this down to negative 24. That means that we're it's going to be going down two octaves. So you hear it, you see it's playing at F sharp. So imagine every time I bring it down negative 12 it'll go down one octave so it would mean that it would start playing at four at the like the fourth octave. So F sharp on the fourth octave. So since we brought it down two octaves it's gonna be hitting on octave number three. And let's take a listen to what that sounds like. And you can see it's a lot more bassy than what it was before. You can see that right here. And we're not done with it yet. So we're going to go into here and we're going to select modern talking. And what this is going to do is give us a different kind of uh, voice to work with, I guess you could say. It's like a different... Uh, it's it's I can't find the word right now, but it's like a, just basically like a different template of a sound, so like a waveform, 
that's the word I'm looking for. It's a different waveform. So you can, let's take a listen to what it sounds like now. You can hear that it's pretty, sounds all right, I guess, but not anything near what we want right now. So let's just see what we can do with this. Now you can see when I mess with this wavetable position, it makes the voice change. So what we're going to do whoops, is bring this out a bit longer here so we can just have it loop. And you can see that, yeah, when I change that, it changes. So what we're going to do is throw an LFO on here. It's going to make it kind of change like this. It's going to automate this knob to move back and forth between where where I, wherever I set the limits to and it's going to do that over a set time depending on how I sync it. So let's sync it to 1 8th and we'll have it do this. And this should be good. Actually I forgot to tell you <laughs> and to do that myself. Uh, this ratio determines how fast it is. If you didn't have sync clicked you can just use this but if you want it to be automated and make it synced with your beat you really want to have it synced and set it to something like this so you can see there that we now have like kind of like a bass wobble kind of deal going on but you can tell when I play it and I'll play it after I tell you guys this uh, there isn't much low bass on it and we'll fix that you can see that right there. See what this low bass is? Not low bass. Whoops, wrong thing. You can see it's kind of hitting in the low mid area, but that's where like a snare hits. You don't really want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down just a little bit, and we're going to add another vo voice, <laughs> another voice, and uh, what we're going to do is set it to be a sine wave. And if you don't know what a sine wave is, basically it's like... If you set it really low, it's the kind of bass that doesn't even make a sound. It kind of just makes a vibration. So it kind of, it's that kind of bass that if you're listening to it in a car, it makes the car shake. So we're going to bring it up and we're just going to test it. And since we want it to work with that, oh yeah, 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 we're working with, we're going to do this and have it be kind of come in and out as the bass is going. If you wanted to hit the other way, you could do just reversed. And since we're doing that, might as well work it with it like that. So what we're going to do here is go into our effects. Now that we have our basic sound done, you can kind of see it wobbling over here. And we're going to go into our EQ, and we're going to start EQing our sounds. Just do something like this. Let's actually bring this back to here. Okay, LFOs I don't like to work with that much because it can also, like when we're changing notes like that, it can kind of make it seem choppy. So. What we're actually going to do is switch this to a performer, and we're going to make it do this. And basically what that is, is if you wanted, like if you were to change one, and you just did that, and you went to hold it like that, you have to be holding shift for that to actually work, because it'll only do it once, but if you do it with shift, it'll drag it all the way across. So, anyways, let's just listen to it now. Also make it just a hit instead of a wobble. You can kind of see that we're having a bit more freedom now. So let's make it a hit, but make it kind of a sustaining hit. And we'll throw in a couple of just double hits just to emphasize it. And we'll 
let's throw in a triple right here. And you can see that I'm doing it for both of these, but actually, if you have it on the X fade sequence, if you have that just set to one side, you don't need to do that. If I had it on right here in the middle, then it would use both part, like the top part and the bottom part equally. But since I just have it up here, I really don't need to mess with this, but I still do it because I'm kind of OCD, so <laughs> let's take a listen to this. <laughs> something like this like da 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 na 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 like that okay see our sound is not done by any means I actually want to make this louder and sound different I just did here was I added a scream filter and I made that the main kind of output for the filter so everything all the sounds here have to go through this filter before they get sent here into the master before they get put into the output so we're gonna mess with this uh, filter here this cutoff shows because since this is a low pass bass filter uh, the more low that I have this knob only the lower registers of the sound will play if you know what I mean so I'll show you as I just do this you can see that right now only the low sounds are playing but as I drag it up more and more of the sound starts to come out so uh, these scream and resonance uh, knobs I don't really touch them well I, you can they're very important but for this particular sound they aren't necessary the scream just kind of messes with the pitch of the overall sound and then the resonance kind of adds like distortion that's what I've noticed anyways that's not always how they work but that's kind of like mainly what they do so uh, let's just work from here I guess That's one basic sound. Um, let's try to make another. Uh, another sound that a lot of people want to make is that kind of knife party, like blip 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 sound. That's kind of like up in your face kind of deal. Um, I wish I could have an example to show you guys, but it's kind of just like a square saw that kind of just kind of just pitches upwards really fast so we'll actually open up a preset and I'll show you guys that so I think it's this one that I kind of want to do and show you guys but this one has sub bass on it so we want to take that off for now because we, we just want the synth that's basically it this one's actually really loud sorry I probably should have thrown that into the mixer and brought the volume down beforehand That's basically that. Uh, you can see right here that it's just a square wave. And what we did to make that was took our envelope number one because it's not routed to anything. We don't want to use number four because that's already used. And what I did was I used the attack of this envelope and kind of messed with it a little bit and threw it on the pitch so that this kind of acts as the pitch going upwards and upwards. And I brought it up one octave. And if I put the sub bass on, you can hear like what it would sound like with sub bass. And yeah, so if I were to bring this, make this longer, the it would take longer for that pitch to go up all the way. So this would sound really weird. If 
I brought it up instantly, it wouldn't even sound like it's going up. It would just sound like it's there instantly. And yeah, that's basically all there is to that sound. Um, there's a couple more sounds I could go over, but basically this is kind of like as far as I can show you guys for this because it's a lot harder to kind of tell you to make certain sounds um, it's a lot better that you just kind of make them on your own because you kind of want to find your own sounds and work with those and that way nobody else can sound like you and originality and creativity uh, kind of throw you out there more and just make for better kind of music overall so I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. I kind of I tried to go over as much as I can, but I know there's still a ton of massive that I didn't cover. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, just let me know. I'll try to cover it. Oh, actually, geez, I'm sorry, guys. I completely forgot to go over automation clips. Um, someone asked me to show how to increase the tempo and stuff like that over time to make a song faster and slower. And I guess I could go into like a project or something I did for that so actually one second I'll open that all right so basically I made like just a drum loop to show you guys this and I'm actually going to throw in a pad loop like that I also made from another project so it sounds like this right now I'm not gonna make you guys do that whole thing. So basically, uh, tempo automation clips are really easy. All you gotta do is select the part that you want to change the tempo of, right click on your actual tempo, and select create automation clip. And you're gonna wanna have a section after that to reference. So, what I'm gonna do here is zoom in a bit, and you can see our tempo starts at 140. Let's say we wanna bring it up higher. So we just drag this up, and you see at the end of here it says 177. Maybe we want it to be a bit more. Since we're OCD, or I'm OCD anyways, bring it down to 175. So that's basically how you use a uh, automation clip. Also, what you have, what, well, you don't have to do this, but what I do is I make something unique, and then I do this, and I bring it over here, and I just set it so that the tempo is at 140 at the very beginning, and it stays there until that section that I want to change. So. Let's take a listen to this. Uh, also, this is not gonna sound too good because it's just a random tempo change. It's not. It, it's really better to do these during builds. So. Yeah, that's basically it for a tempo change. That's how you do that. Uh, if you guys have any more questions or anything like that, just let me know. I'll be sure to try and address them as, as well as I can in another video, or I'll try to reply to you in the comments or something. So that's basically it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Uh, that's basically it, and have a wonderful day.